the other bathroom wars. Janice Serge remembers her father pushing her wheelchair into a men's room in the late 1970s. Close your eyes, he would say, as he quickly wheeled her toward the stalls. Today, a father who took his disabled daughter into a men's room in a public building in North Carolina technically would run afoul of the state's so-called bathroom bill, which requires that people over the age of seven use the bathroom that matches the sex on their birth certificates. While the law is aimed at transgender people, disability advocates worry that it also could affect people with disabilities who, because they need assistance from an opposite-sex caregiver or parent, also use opposite-sex bathrooms. Parents like Jennifer Eldridge Bird of Miami, whose sons, ages 11 and 15, have autism, say their children's disabilities require that the parent and child stay together at all times. They're not very high-functioning, she said. If I'm going in the ladies' room, they're going in the ladies' room. Sharice Tracy, a mother of four in West Point, New York, said sending her eight-year-old, who has autism, into a shared men's room alone is out of the question. I wouldn't send him in anywhere alone, let alone a men's room, she said. For Laura Rossi and her 13-year-old twins, Using public bathrooms became more challenging as her children have gotten older. Her son, Matt, has Tourette syndrome, accompanied by significant impairment of fine motor and social skills. When the twins were little and cute, there were all these smiles and nodding heads, said Miss Rossi, a public relations professional who lives in Jamestown, R.I. But as they got older, she began to hear criticism when she took them into the women's room. Matt's needs are invisible, and he got tall very quickly, she said. If there's not a family bathroom, we got a lot of looks and comments, you know, meant for you to hear but not really to you, like this is not the boys' room. With restroom access a topic of national debate, many people with disabilities and their families are hoping that conversation extends to expanding access to public facilities for every person. For many of the nearly one in five Americans, and about 5% of school-age children, with some disability, lack of access to public toilet facilities challenges their ability to take part in ordinary daily life. For some, like Miss Serge, 46, who was born with cerebral palsy, the challenges are primarily physical. The stalls aren't wide enough, she said quickly ticking off a list of problems she faces regularly in public restrooms in Amherst, Mass., where she lives. If the door swings in, not out, you can't close it once you're in there. The rails or toilet seats are often loose, there's not room for her and for someone to help her and she has hit her head on a badly positioned huge toilet paper roll more than once. And by the time I'm done, the motion-activated flush has gone off, like... 14 times, times.